So this video is going to be worked examples, finding equations of planes. Now to do it, you really need to remember that r dot n equals a dot n, where n is the normal vector, a is the position vector of a point on the plane, and r is kind of all the other points on the plane. Alright, let's do a question. First cab off the rank, the easiest one. Find the equation of a plane where the normal to the plane is negative 1, 5, negative 3, and the point on the plane is negative 3, 4, and 6. So it's just going to be grabbing our formula and shoving in the stuff we know. So R is just the thing, the all of the things. N is our normal vector, negative 1, 5, negative 3. And finally, our A is a point. Now, that point, we need to write it more as a position vector. So negative 3, I, 4, J, 6, K dot, uh, and then our normal vector again, negative 1, 5, negative 3. All right, we're going to calculate that dot product. This times this, this times this, this times this, and add them all together. Now, the dot product of those is 5. Now, this is kind of the equation, but it's a bit rude to write it this way. So really, I'll write it as r dot i plus 5j minus 3k equals 5. Um, that is my vector equation of the plane. What if I wanted the Cartesian equation of the plane? Well, this is really easy as well. Just understand that r is just xi plus yj plus zk, and then just multiply or find the dot product of that. So it's going to be uh, x times 1, which is x, plus y times 5, which is 5y, uh, plus uh, z times negative 3, which is negative 3z. And you can see it inevitably just ends up being these values here, 1x, 5y, negative 3z equals 5, and that is my Cartesian equation of the plane. Now, I'm moving pretty fast through this, so you might want to pause it and think about what really happened there. R is R vector, xi plus yj plus um, zk, and then I just found the dot product of those two things. All right, let's try something else. This time I'm going to find the plane defined by three points. So if you have three points in space and you lay a piece of paper over them and you extend that piece of paper out to infinity, you have a plane. Now, the one exception to that is if these three points were collinear. If those three points were in a line, that wouldn't define a plane. So three non-collinear points define a plane. So I've just kind of stuck my three points in space just so I can explain to you what's going on. This makes no sense, the placement of them, right? It doesn't matter, though. Um, it all comes down to this formula. I need a normal vector and I need a position vector. Well, I got position vectors. I could draw a position vector to A, to B, to C. So I got plenty of position vectors. What I don't have is a normal. But I can find a normal because I know how to find the vector cross product. So if I drew a vector from A to B, and that's going to be easy, vector AB, and I drew another vector AC, if I found the cross product of AB and AC, that would lead me to a vector coming straight out of there. It would lead me to, like, hard to show, but it would lead me to a vector that looked like that, with a right angle between that one and that one, and another right angle between that one and that one, right? Cross products lead to perpendicular vectors, which is what I need in this case. So let's find that vector, let's find that vector, let's find the cross product, easy. So finding vector AB, which is this one here, is not too bad. We subtract these from these, and we get 2 minus 0, so 2i, 1 minus 1, no j value, 0 minus 1 minus k. All right, so that's vector A, B. What about vector A, C? Negative 2 minus 0, I is negative 2, I. 0 minus 1, J is negative, J. And 3 minus 1, K is 2, K. And that is vector A, C. So now that I know what vector A, B is and vector A, C is, I can find this, my normal vector. The normal vector is going to be equal to the cross product of A, B, A. C. And if you've got your wits about you, you might be thinking to yourself, but wait, should I do AB or should I do AC? Because I know that the cross product is not commutative. 
this answer is going to be different to this answer. But I don't care because whether I find the normal vector sticking out this way or whether I find the normal vector sticking out that way, it doesn't matter because I just need a normal vector. So do what you want. Now, if you're watching this video, you know how to find the cross product and the cross product of this is negative i minus 2j minus 2k. All right, so now that I have a normal vector and now that I have a multitude of starting positions, I can use my equation here to find what the equation of this plane actually is. Now I've gotten started here. The equation of the plane is equal to r dot the normal vector equals a position vector. Now I said I've got a multitude. I can use this one. I can use this one. I can use this one. I think I'll use this one just because that's kind of how I've drawn it, I guess. But anything would work. So I've put in my position vector, I've put in my normal vector, I can do the dot product of those, I can write this one out a bit nicer with ij's and k's, and I'll have an answer. So that leads us to a vector equation of r dot this equals negative 4, and if we wanted the Cartesian equation, we could do that as well. It's just negative x, negative 2y, negative 2z equals negative 4. Vector equation, Cartesian equation, they are both um, equations of the plane. So a third thing you can do is when you've got two lines and they're intersecting, you can imagine a line in space, another line in space, wherever they're intersecting, that then allows you to draw a plane between those two lines. Now you could probably do this without my help, right? Because you understand that you have a formula here and you only need two things. You need a normal vector and you need a position vector. So if you have two lines meeting at a point, if you can find the point at which they meet, that point is on the plane. And you can find the point at which these meet by creating a bunch of parametric equations and solving it for the i, j, and k components. Now I'm gonna tell you that these lines meet at point one, zero, negative two. You're gonna to have to take my word for that, but if you can't do that, go back in the playlist and watch a previous video, because I definitely do that. All right, uh, after that, I really now need a normal vector. So if those two lines are meeting at a point, and that point is 1, 0, negative 2, I can find a normal vector, that is one that makes a right angle with that one, and makes a right angle with that one as well. And that's the normal vector we're looking for, we'll call that normal vector n. Now that means that normal vector n is going to be equal to the cross product of these two directional vectors. And that direction comes from this and this, because they're the directions that these lines are traveling in. All right, so I'm going to find the cross product of these two, not the dot product, the cross product, because I'm trying to find a perpendicular vector. Now, you should already know how to do that if you're watching this video, which means that my normal vector is equal to negative i plus 5j minus 3k, and now I can just use my formula here and say that that's equal to r dot negative 1, 5, negative 3 equals the point at which these lines meet, which you can calculate, 1, 0, negative 2, mul uh, dot product, the normal vector, and again, you can tidy that up. So you can give it as a vector equation, r dot i plus 5j minus 3k equals 5, or a Cartesian equation, uh, x plus 5y minus 3z equals 5. Both of those answers are the equations of the plane that defined by these two intersecting lines. Okay, you can see we keep going back to this formula. You need to be able to use your cross product. You need to be able to use some of the skills that you've learned before. But really, it all comes down to being able to find a normal vector and a position vector and putting them together.